Hello, this is Dustin and Mithin. We are graduate students at the University of Dayton. Mithin is in the Renewable and Clean Energy Program. I, Dustin, am in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. We've worked on a project that we called Innovative Solar Demand Response. Essentially what this project does is looks to take the green button data that's now been made available to us and tie it in with several softwares that we use here at the University of Dayton, one called eSIM and one called SolarSIM. The essence of our project is to take a traditional grid-tied solar PV system and incorporate batteries into that system. And the batteries are used to fluctuate the electricity output from the solar PV system to more closely match the electricity usage in a home. So the green button data is used first to size the system and we look to determine what an average profile looks like on an hourly basis for a residential building. Once we've determined that hourly profile, we then determine what the baseline or the base load energy use is. Um, and that load we look to have the grid meet on a daily basis. Everything above the base load, we want our solar PV system with batteries to meet. By doing this, we can level the amount of electricity that a residential building draws from the grid and everything over the base load amount is met by our solar PV system. So to talk through some of the softwares we use and how we were able to incorporate the green button data, I'll hand it over to Mithin. <coughs> Hello. So we did a program called a green button data reader. <coughs> Here's a green button data file which we have got from a real residence in Berkeley, California. So we did a program to read the data from this uh, XML file and once we hit the read XML data button, we'll, we'll get the required cost values, kilowatt hour values, and corresponding data values from the XML file. So once we get the required values from here, this can be uh, transported to different kinds of file formats like TXT or an Excel and many, fi many file formats like that. So once we get all this, we so for example, we have all this data available in Microsoft Excel where you can see the cost values for each one hour we have the corresponding kilowatt hour values and etc so we have the kilowatt hours and cost values and date time values here so now that we have the electricity consumption and cost values we can we have to know what is the instant solar radiation at that particular location so for this house in berkeley california we use a software called eSIM to generate a file to generate a wea file which means it's going to have the harley instant solar radiation at that particular location so once we have electricity values and incident solar radiation values, we're using a software called SolarSim to size the solar panels so such that it would level off the demand, anything above the base load. Over to Dustin. All right, to take a look a little closer at the case study home that we used, um, I'll scroll down here to the trend of consumption for one day for this residential building. So what you're looking at here on the horizontal axis, you've got hour of the day. So for example, um, from about midnight to six o'clock in the morning, uh, we're looking at pretty low energy consumption in this house. Makes sense, the, the people in this home are probably sleeping at that time. Um, then between seven and eight, people are, are waking up and you see on average, hourly electricity consumption goes up. Then again, towards the, towards the end of the day when people are more at work or, or maybe not in their home, you see a little bit of a dip on average. Um, and then at the very end of the day when people are home for dinner and getting ready for bed, that's when we see our highest consumption values in this particular home. And as a note, we believe this, this is a fairly typical trend for, for homes where, where during the day you've got a little bit higher electric consumption at night you certainly have your lowest and at the very end of the day that's when you see some of your highest consumption. So what we look to do is rather than have a solar PV a grid tied system where the majority of your electric generation is in this middle portion of the day we want to hold some of it to be able to meet this peak generation towards the end of the day. Um, that's where our batteries come into play to be able to hold back some of that electricity. Um, as I said in the beginning, we want to size this system to meet the base load. So for this home, 
our base load energy requirement we would call a little over 0.4 kilowatts. So we basically size so that the grid can meet anything under this level, um, about 0.4. Everything above that is what we want to fill with our battery powered um, system. A again, basically looking to stabilize demand um, for the utility. Scroll down and see if this system were in place, what might it look like? Um, and here you see everything that's darked out, that would be what's met by the PV system. Um, and then we've got our fairly stable grid level demand. Um, again, for, for the utility, for them to be able to um, have a fairly stable level from residential buildings. A few notes on future work. Um, one of the things that we talked about would would be having this software, this application, be able to simulate this over every hour of every day in the year. We've certainly got the data available to be able to do that. Um, we just haven't gotten that application developed yet. That would be something that, that would be worked on in the future. And then another thing that has us excited is the ability to integrate weather forecasts into the system as well. Uh, we could use inverse building models, which allow you to very accurately predict the energy consumption in a home in conjunction with weather forecasts so that if you know you've got a hot day where you're going to be running a lot of air conditioning, um, your system could automatically hold back some, some battery power so you're, you're able to meet that peak demand. And then also as, as time of day pricing becomes more prevalent for a consumer owning a PV system, it could be of great interest to them to be able to use their power generated by solar PV when the prices are the highest. So in conclusion, we, we believe we've got an application that can do great things to stabilize demand, especially from residential buildings. And we believe it also could be very attractive to uh, homeowners that, that own residential PV systems uh, when time of day pricing becomes more prevalent.